your average doctor has no idea because they're bound by this medical model of money, meat, medicines. Got iron deficiency? Have you, mate? You know, even though most meters have iron deficiencies and fatigue, I will drink more coffee then. How it doesn't work? Pre-workout doesn't work. Ritalin doesn't work. Adderall doesn't work. Dexies doesn't work. Modafinil doesn't work. Phenamine. Now you're feeling stressed, anxious? All right, here's Topamax. Here's Zoloft. Here's Prozac. <laughs> Dick don't work. Here's Viagra. Here's Cialis. Here's Testosterone. Here's Sustanon. Here's Andron. <laughs> like, got a high blood pressure now? Here's some beta blockers. Here's this. Here's that. Whoa, you got a, your heart's done. All right, let's do a bypass. Oh, let's do a head trans, heart transplant. Oh, shit, you're dead? Well, my brother's a funeral director. We'll give you a 10% discount this week only. That's what's going on, people. All right? Get educated or keep getting medicated. Okay, so we have a video here. A video here. Oh, man. Oh, it's just getting better and better and better. I've been vegan 19 years. Let's have a look. Pub, vegan athlete. Not, not just a vegan, not just some anemic. I've been a vegan athlete for 19 years. Kickboxing, running marathons, racing bikes, winning bike races, crits to 24-hour races. Vegan athlete, 19 years, riding around the world. Across Australia, blah, 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 blah. Vegan athlete here. So speaking with some experience. Um, this one here, hypogonadism and erectile dysfunction associated with soy consumption. So they're trying to say that hypogonadism and erectile dysfunction is associated with soy product consumption. A soy boy has erectile dysfunction and hypogonadism. That's what they're trying to associate with. Now, this is from the Nutrition Case Report in August 2011. Now, remember, PubMed science is taken with a pinch of salt because we know the context and the personal bias is evident in all today's science. Science has been corrupted, personal bias, money, etc. Let's have a look here. So, previous research is focused on the benefits of soy and its active ingredients, isoflavones. For instance, soy consumption has been associated with lower cardiovascular risk and breast cancer risks. However, the number of reports demonstrating adverse effects on isoflavones due to their estrogen-like properties has increased. We present the case of a 19-year-old type 1 diabetic. So this is a guy, right? and this is no shame, any type 1s out there. I've, had, I've interviewed plenty of type 1s on my channel over the years. We've got um, Ben, we've got Robert Barbaro. So just type into my channel, Type 1 Diabetic, all right? And we'll see some interviews. Listen to them, all right, when it comes to nutrition, uh, high carb, high, high sugar, low fat diets, right? So anyway, if you've got diabetes type 1, it means you've got severe endocrine issues. So much so, if you stop taking insulin, you would die, all right? So if you've got type 1 diabetes, you already have a very compromised endocrine system in terms of your pancreas, all right? So, and that's fine. I'm just saying it is what it is. So, these people are going to use soy instantly. They're using a person with a compromised endocrine system, a type 1 diabetic, all right? Let's go into it more. Uh, we present the case of a 19 year old type 1 diabetic, but otherwise healthy. He's healthy other than type 1 diabetic. He's healthy other than he's on medication for life. Other Otherwise, he would die. Otherwise, he's healthy. That's just like, mm, you know. Now, it doesn't mean you can't be healthy and have type 1. You can't, especially if you're doing my protocols, etc. But I'm just saying these people are compromised, all right? This is how it is. You know, it's just like I'm compromised mentally. However, um, otherwise healthy man with sudden onset, a sudden onset loss of libido and erectile dysfunction after the ingestion of large quantities of soy-based products and a vegan, a vegan style diets. What does a vegan style diet even mean? Like, what, what the, what's a vegan style?
Star Wars. Well, you're eating rice with your chicken. That's rice is vegan. That's a vegan style meal. You see, like, I love this vegan. This is, oh, man. This stuff, I don't need caffeine. This stuff gets me jacked up, man. This is like Jack 3D pre-workout for me. Just reading this bullshit. Soy base. He experienced a sudden onset. Oh, it's the soy chicken made me lose my boner. My little veggie dog went limp. This is the absolute rubbish of rubbish. Pardon me. This is like the bottom of the barrel. This is the stuff Joe Rogan uses. This is insane. Anyway, so blood levels are free to... Like, we don't know what else he's... Is he doing drugs? Is he even a vegan? Like, is he, is he having some sort of health crisis going on? Maybe he's like excess weight and he just wants to like drop some weight. Maybe he's doing a, a Mick, Mick the Vegan, anemic vegan starvation nation, Dr. Gregor situation. And that will drop your testosterone. That will cause libido issues, all right? He, I would be totally fine with if Mick the Vegan, etc. was hanging out with my girlfriend. Could you know that guy? He ain't going to be trying to cut your lunch because his libido would be like, you know, that of someone who has low carbohydrate and orthorexia. Low. And that's fine. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying. If you want high libido, eat high calories, guys. White rice, sugar, bananas. The bananas shaped for a reason like that. White rice is like little mini things, you know, like these things get you, eh. and I know because I've had a lot of experience with women and libidos and using steroids and not using steroids and having your T-levels flatline from not being on. And I know what it feels like, right? I know, I've tried all the supplements, etc. Just personal curiosity. I can speak from personal experience, all right? What it's like to have threesomes and groupies and psycho fangirls and their boyfriends making documentaries about you because of your bedroom pursuits um, and conquests. So this is a personal subject I really enjoy talking about. Um, and it's got me a lot of trouble over the years. So blood levels of free testosterone, total testosterone, and uh, DHEA were taken at the initial presentation for examination and continuously monitored for two years after the discontinuation, discontinuation of the vegan. Hang on, you said vegan style. Now you're saying vegan? Like, which one is it? Cash or credit? Vegan or not vegan? Vegan style? It's like, oh, yeah. So see what they're doing? They're sort of weaving the conversation. They're sort of like... If I was the judge in court, I'd be like, hang on, barrister boy, you said vegan style, now you're saying vegan, which is a big difference there. There's a big difference. A Big Mac is a vegan style burger. It's got the bread, it's got the lettuce, it's got tomatoes, it's got the pickles, but it's got that biggest slib of dead animal in there as well. So it's vegan style, but it's not vegan, all right? So there's a big difference there. There's a big difference. Remember that person, Leah Keith, the, was it the vegetarian myth? who claimed she was a vegan, but she wasn't even a vegetarian. She was eating eggs and cheese every chance she got. Her own quote there. In the first bit of a book, I ate eggs and cheese every time I, every time I could. Like, what? And they use her as an example of a vegan. And she wasn't even a vegetarian. Anyway, because the, the cheese had rennet in it. It's just, it's just a group of shit show out there, isn't it? Anyway, I, I try and teach my audience how to... I don't do any jump cuts. I don't do any script. This is just real-world conversation going on there. If you know your shit, you don't need a script. That's just it. If you need a script, you don't know shit. Simple as that. You're just making, just reading, parroting nonsense. You know, these people that do jump cuts after jump cut. Imagine if vegan gains or um, any of my critics out there who've tried you know, to trash me over the years, why don't you do a live debate doing it on it? Because <laughs> they hide behind script. And they read studies like this. Well, do you know they're making a study from PubMed? Uh, this, this uh, like stop the PubMed talk from real life experience. Oh, you don't have real life experience because you live in your mum's basement. Okay, that's fine. Just admit it. Nothing wrong with living in your mum's basement. Just admit it. All right? Nothing wrong with living in your mum. You know. <laughs> One of my biggest stalkers, biggest haters, live with their mum still, even if they're fifty odd or twenty or whatever. It's like, and that's fine. Live with mum to get along. But I'm just saying. My haters have one thing in common is they live at home with mummy. Uh, you should move out. Become a man. All right? Become a man. And you won't be so bitchy when my face comes off the internet. Anyway. Let's keep it real else. Um, yeah, so, they, they, all right, so they've taken at the initial presentation for examination and monitored. So he took his testosterone and his uh, free testosterone. And d what, what about DHT? What about estrogen? What about estradiol? Yeah. What are those parameters? What is hemoglobin? Well, how many calories is this dude eating? He's 19. 
You know, what about beforehand? What was his levels like? What medications is he on? Right? Is he overweight? What's his body mass index? We don't know these things. What's his estrogen levels? Is he got you know? Is he been smashing the cheese in between his vegan meals? Well, who knows? There's so many variables here. Was he doing a water fast? Did he have anorexia? We don't even know this guy's body weight. How can you how can you use an abstract without any body weight or fitness numbers to look at? We've got nothing to work on here other than he ate a, a vegan style diet. And even in the thing they say we ate vegan style and he ate vegan. It's like duh, duh, duh. so we can see how inaccurate these people are recording. Anyway, these parameters normalize after one year of cessation of a vegan diet. Um Was he even on vegan? You guys said vegan style. Normalization of testosterone were paralleled by... What does even normalization mean? Like, you could be, you know... Uh, you could be on the scale in Australia for testosterone is 10 to 30, typically, right? So this guy could be a, a 9, and you have low testosterone. Then you go up to 11, or you can go up to 10, and now you're normal testosterone, right? So if you go from a 9 to a 10 or 11. If, you're, if you've got low libido at 9, you're going to have low libido at 11 or 10. That's just how it is, right? Now, some guys can have a uh, level of 10 and have great libido. It varies from person to person, okay? But we don't even know what numbers this guy was at and then afterwards. They're just like, well, not, not, so this, con, this, this, for me, brings red flags. They said he was low. How low? 9? 8? One, zero. If you're zero, then yeah. If you're nine, it's like low normal. And then you go to 10, now you're normal. It's, like, it's just one point. It's like, that's like, what's that, 3%. A 3% increase in testosterone can make you go from deficient to normal. Is that right? One, one point? One point out of 30? I'm saying that's 3%. It is 3%. And then in the US, it's about 200 up to about a thousand, all right, in the different uh, nanograms, pick a, pick a moles a litre, etc. Nanograms a litre. Um, so in Australia, 10 to 30 in the US, about 200 to a thousand. Most people sit around the 600 or the, the 15, 20 mark. And this is why, this, this is what baffles me here, is that, you know, these people will say, well, look at this study. We don't know if the guy had anorexia, to repeat myself, we don't know if he had anorexia, bulimia, we don't know if he's obese, you know, we don't know any of these things. We don't know what medications he's on. Anyway, the soy consumption is allowed to hyper... In this case, indicates that soy consumption... No, it doesn't, dude. It doesn't. Far out. And erectile dysfunction, to the best of our knowledge, this is the first report of combination of decreased free testosterone and increased DHA blood concentrations after consuming a soy rich diet. Hence, this case emphasizes the impact of isoflavor. This is absolute rubbish. This is absolute nonsense. It's one... Little case report from 2011. That doesn't matter too much. What matters is there's no context. There's no other variables discussed. What are these levels before and after? What are these levels today? What medications is he taking? Is he doing recreational drugs? Is he doing exams? Is he having issues with his girlfriend? Is he having issues with his sexuality? Maybe he's bi. Maybe he's straight. Maybe he's in the closet. Maybe he's not sure what's going on. Maybe he wants to be trans. Agenda. Whatever. You're cool. That's fine. Just saying. There's so many variables here that affect libido and testosterone. Stress, maybe move back into his mom or his abusive dad moved back in and he's, you know, getting beaten up or whatever. Like, it's just so many variables here that aren't even discussed because you can't discuss that if you've been paid to knock the soy industry or the soy protein or whatever. Someone from Big Beef says, hey, look, you know, who are these? Who even are these, uh, these researchers? You know, who knows? You know? They've got a personal interest, don't they? Like, yeah, well, how can we make soy look bad? Here's a soy boy eating an almost vegan diet. Mm, he looks really unwell. He's got type 1 diabetes. His endocrine system's bad, but let's call him healthy anyway. Even, if you, even though he's on medications, as mentioned previously, type 1 diabetes is so serious. If you stop taking your medication, if you stop taking your hormones, you die. Uh, you can even die in a day or a few hours or a few days. All right? So type 1 diabetes is no joke, all right? Wow. Anyway, that's the rant, that's the rave. Um, if you want to increase your testosterone, guys, move out from your nagging mum. 
stop drinking milk. Milk's full of estrogen. Estrogen, when your estrogen levels go up, your testosterone levels can go down. Because your body's like, well, I've got enough estrogen. You know, too much estrogen is bad. We'll just cut. Because if you've got too much testosterone, that can convert into estrogen. All right? So it's, the hormones are very, very complex. Go to bed early, 8, 9 p.m. Get yourself a girlfriend who matches your libido. All right? And also matches your sexual fluidity, meaning that if you're just like, you know, instantly aroused, you want to have someone who's like that as well. Because if you're instantly aroused and your partner, boy or girl, takes 20 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour to get going, and all these conditions, you'll be like, oh, you go, oh man, I just want to go now. I'm so frustrated. And that can cause a lot of tension in relationships, men or women, okay? These are things you're not going to read on PubMed. Um, What else? Get a job you like doing, man. Right? Be passionate about what you're doing. If you're not passionate about what you're doing, if you feel, if you're going to feel like a loser, your T level's going to drop. How you hold yourself could raise your T. The Harvard study, they're like, you know, posture, boom, raise your T. What else can raise your T? In my experience, getting enough carbohydrate. That's paramount. That's paramount. But what about fats? Healthy fats? Eh. Carbohydrates. That's what gets libido going. You go to the countries with the highest breeding rate, Africa's, India, Asia's. They're smashing the white rice. The women are horny as rabbits. The men are horny as rabbits. And they breed like rabbits. And they're living on carbohydrate, a high carbohydrate, mostly plant-centered uh, nutrition with very, very low fat. And you go to the rural areas, man. Boom. You know, I mean, you go to the Uganda, highest fertility rate in the world. Excuse me, coughing up rice. Highest fertility rate in the world, Uganda. I'm not any stims, by the way. This is like... This is carved up energy and reading BS on PubMed can be hyped up. Go to Uganda. The fertility rate's insane. What do they live on? Bananas. Highest banana per capita consumption. Uganda. White rice and sugars. You, you mean your girlfriend could go there and just use a public phone and probably get pregnant just touching the handle. That's how fertile people are over there. All right? So just be careful. Go to Uganda. Uh, make sure you have a sex to me. Or, uh, <laughs> seriously, this, this is hilarious, man. Um... I've done a vegan festival, uh, put it on, free festival, ran it by myself for a number of years there in uh, from 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017. And man, the amount of sex going on at that festival, damn, you know, damn. You know, this, the vegans are horny. Uh, my vegans are horny as if they get enough carbohydrate, right? Carbs is where it's at. And then you go to hang out with the Woodstock Fruit Festival, which is a fantastic event. I'm not knocking it, I'm just saying that the Woodstock Fruit Festival, or any fruit festival, it's any fruit festival, attracts a lot of people with orthorexia, eating disorders, like the space cadets, and like, whoa, and libidos, and the guys have get dried up, the guys are like, there, and it's not happening, there's not much going on. Chiang Mai, Mortal 4, during a festival, man, the hotels were complaining to me of broken beds, um, sheets out the window, noise, like, it was insane, man, it was a rock fest. Uh, it was insane. <laughs> Condoms blocking up this. It's just ins- Oh, man. Anyway. Oh, girlfriends, you know, get rid of the boyfriends. <laughs> Far out, man. It's still going on today. The drama, the sex scandal drama of Chiang Mai is still going on today. It is hilarious. So that's why I just have to laugh when I see low libido. I'm just like, man, why don't you get a real vegan, uh, a per- an experience, a person who has... Healthy fitness, healthy lifestyle, carved up nutrition, doesn't have an eating disorder, doesn't have orthorexia, and use them as your case study about soy decreasing free testosterone, oh, which is absolute rubbish. Anyone can have low testosterone. Low testosterone is an epidemic here in Australia. The amount of prescription testosterones out there is huge. Millions, millions of young men are injecting testosterone every week. Oh, I've done it before. Personal curiosities, like to have a personal opinion on certain subjects, safe to do so. Did my research on that. Talked to many endocrinologists over the years. Most endocrinologists, in my opinion, have zero idea. I was talking to an endocrinologist the other day, um, recording conversation, not, not prepared to use it. They were so poorly versed in human hormones. Yeah. They'd done the uni, got the doctorate, etc. But in real life experience... They were so arrogant, so like undercarbed, making mistakes on paper, making basic mathematics mistake. Yours truly could understand and, and point out. As a, and you said that dosage, you knew that. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. You know, not even able to own up there. Ugh. Anyway, 
Most endocrinologists out there will say type 2, type 2 diabetes can't be cured or reversed or prevented or improved upon. They'll say you need to take medication for life. And type 1, just the case. But you can also reduce your units. If you reduce your fat intake, you increase your insulin sensitivity. If you up your sugar intake, white sugar, white rice, fruit, it's all the same pretty much in terms of sugars. Uh, grams per kilo, dates, 700 grams of sugars per kilo, rice, 700 grams of sugar per kilo, dry banana, 700 grams of sugar per kilo. All right, so if you decrease your fat consumption, you increase your insulin sensitivity. You, inc you decrease your insulin resistance. And the endocrinologist is just like, what? No. Like, I'm not a nutritionist. That's not my field. So, oh my, God. oh my God. And so people suffer because they put all their trust and all the power in the meds, in the doctors, in the medications, etc. And that's fine in a certain situation where you're unconscious and you can't operate on your leg. But in today's world of nutrition and exercise and early nights, you can do a bit of homework and get the opinion of your doctors and the medics and all that stuff, but also cross-check that with logic and common sense. And if you're going to take any medications, people, please look at the side effects. Maybe this guy was taking finasteride, all right, because he had he was losing his hair from his insulin diabetes medication. He's taking finasteride, which can lower your libido and create erectile issues. Like, there's so many medications this guy could be taking. Maybe he, he upped the dose of his insulin. That could cause issues. Like, there's so many things, possibilities and variables here. I would have loved to sit down with this person and go tick by one by one by one, like a nutrition detective like I am, all right? Nutrition performance detective, looking for the marginal gains. Where is this person losing? Where are they winning? How can they win more or lose less? These things, your average doctor has no idea because they're bound by this medical model of money, meat, medicines. Got iron deficiency? Have you, mate? You know, even though most meters have iron deficiencies and fatigue, I will drink more coffee then. How it doesn't work? Pre-workout doesn't work. Ritalin doesn't work. Adderall doesn't work. Dexies doesn't work. Modafinil doesn't work. Phenamine. Now you're feeling stressed, anxious. All right, here's Topamax. Here's Zoloft. Here's Prozac. Here, 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 here. Dick don't work. Here's Viagra. Here's Cialis. Here's testosterone. Here's Sustanon. Here's Demandron. Like, got a high blood pressure now? Here's some beta blockers. Here's this. Here's that. Whoa, you got a, your heart's done. All right, let's do a bypass. Oh, let's do a head trans heart transplant. Oh, shit, you're dead? Well, my brother's a funeral director. We'll give you a 10% discount this week only. That's what's going on, people. All right? Get educated or keep getting medicated. Nothing wrong with certain medications. I'm just saying a lot of people take more than they need. Some people take more than they don't need. And uh, <laughs> I'm crazy. I don't need caffeine. I don't need the stims. I just need to get on PubMed and have a laugh at the stuff, and stuff out there. It's insane, people. Use your brains. Use logic. Don't just trust Joe Rogan. All right? Don't just trust what PubMed. Don't even just trust me. Use logic. How does insulin sensitivity work? All right? Fat coats the insulin receptor site. The sugar can't get into the cell as much. Blood sugar goes up. Insulin levels go up. It's not the sugar's fault. It's the fat's fault. Fat's blocking the door on the cell. Take the fat out of the diet. Sugar goes in. Blood sugar stabilizes. Fast insulin levels drop back down. That's called insulin sensitivity. This happens on a high sugar, low fat diet. Whole foods, what? Baked potato, higher glycemic index than white table sugar. Look it up. Anyway, a lot of people say, but oh, you mean whole foods though, not, not fake sugars like cane sugar. Cane sugar is real. It's incredible for health. That's another whole video, but you lose people when you talk about that. When you tell people the truth, you lose a lot of people. You lose a lot of people who respect lies.